Hey Taurus, thank you so much for coming to your weekly love reading. It should resonate for Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Those of you that are cross-watching, welcome, welcome. This can be your situation or your partner's. It kind of just depends. Um, if you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to receive alerts for when I post my readings. Also, too, please feel free to comment. I love reading what you have to write and really interacting with you guys on that, you know, one-on-one -on -one type of level. Um, anyways, Taurus, uh, let's just go ahead and hop into your reading. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Who's Taurus is person of interest romantically? Who's Taurus is? Okay, judgment, possibly a Scorpio or a Capricorn. Um, you can also be dealing with somebody coming back from your past or, you know, some type of situation that's being revisited. What is, um, how does Taurus feel about this person romantically? Okay, the Emperor, you know, Taurus is like, yo, that is my boo. Okay, there's Aries. Um, what is the current situation or issue? A hand with Taurus and a person of interest. Okay, Nine of Swords, possibly a Gemini or, you know, um, a level of overthinking for sure, because that's definitely what the Nine of Swords is about. And just so you know, the Nine of Swords is Mars and Gemini. So kind of keep that in mind. There's not enough action that's being taken. That's the issue because somebody's definitely in their head, whether it's Taurus, you guys, or your partner. Um, all right. What is the current issue or what's the current block or external influence for Taurus and their person romantically? Woo. Seven of swords. God damn it. I hate the seven of swords. Every time I see this card, I just want to be like, oh, hell no. Um, that's moon and Aquarius. So you already know there's something going on that we may or may not know of. And it's more than likely something we don't like or something that we just, it's being done behind our back. Um, what is the best potential outcome here for Taurus and their person romantically? Uh, this week, 23rd through the 29th, best potential outcome. Okay, Prince of Cups, that's beautiful. Um, Gemini, Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer, but I read the princes as definitely um, a different kind of energy. So I read them as the mutable energy. So I get Pisces or um, Gemini, and maybe some of you guys are like a Gemini, um, Taurus cusp or something like that. Okay. So first things first, I do want to say this. I think that, you know, there has to be a level of communication or something that's coming out of being hurt, right? You know, I do think that your partner feels like, you know, they're very sociable and friendly and outgoing and positive um, and that they have a really great sense of humor. I think that this person tends to come off as very positive and a level of self-expression. However, I do think that at times um, they may come off uh, as scattered or somewhat superficial. I do think definitely, you know, this person may need a level of space in order to feel content. Like if they're too boxed into a situation, they get a little bit antsy and it's like they get nervous or unhappy, right? And I definitely also feel like too, for whatever reason, you know, Taurus, you're coming in more so as, um, hopefully I explained that right with, with, with what I was trying to say. But it's, it's like this person is very sociable and friendly, right? And you're more so of, you know, that manager type, right? You're coming in as very strong and successful and you have a level of material vibration that forces this person to elevate or not. However, it's like you're very ambitious, you're, you're business minded, you're practical, you know, um, there's, there's a level of um, authority when you speak. And I think that you are very successful and courageous and accomplished when it comes to this. I think at times, you know, uh, you may come off as a little bit tense or a little bit forceful trying to get your point across. However, you know, I think Taurus, you take commitment very seriously and, you know, your partner or your person of interest is starting to see that. Now, as far as judgment is concerned, that's how you're viewing this person, which is kind of interesting, right? And I think that when you have judgment here, and judgment is definitely uh, Pluto, and Pluto is what, Scorpio? You and this person have a, there's a very strong, intense, uh, sexual, passionate, like almost like obsessive nature about you and this person for whatever the reason is, right? 
And I think that this person has definitely come into your life or if you've come into their life to transform it in some way. Something needed to change. And, um, you know, you've met them at a point in your life where um, your entire life needed to change. There was something that was boring or something that was being drawn out here. Wow, all these cards just flew out, but I'm going to put them back because there's a lot of them. All right, why is judgment here for uh, Taurus's person of interest with the hangman? Um, you know, maybe you feel like you had to sacrifice or this person had to sacrifice the relationship, you know, in, in order to uh, have something in life, right? That is a possibility. However, this is also Pisces or Aquarius energy. Something was sacrificed here. What, what was sacrificed? What did this person have to sacrifice? What, what was, what was Taurus's? Okay. I'm going to try one more time. That didn't make sense to me. What was Taurus's person? What did they have to sacrifice for? What did they, okay. The all gifted. All right. That makes sense. I'm going to be honest, Taurus. I feel like this person, for whatever reason, they feel bound to a situation where they can't get out of it, whatever that may be, whether that's them stuck in a, you know, a city, a shitty situation at home. Maybe they live with somebody. Maybe this is somebody who literally like is, you know, locked up and really can't do anything, but they feel like they had to sacrifice, you know, giving themselves to you in order to have something else. What was, what were they making the sacrifice for? the 10 of pentacles and it can be to better themselves or to create, you know, a life, um, for you, because let's ask, how does Taurus feel about this 10 of pentacles, mm -hmm. the chariot that there's forward movement. So that's why for whatever reason, I think Taurus, you know, your person definitely wasn't going to approach you with not all their, you know, um, decks stacked together. It's like, they had to make a very, very hard decision either with letting you go in the past in order to have a level of forward movement. Because where is the chariot going? Where does Taurus feel like this chariot is going? Woo, that just shot out to the Six of Cups. Do you see what I'm saying? And it can be the fact that they have kids and they had to make a sacrifice for their children, right? They had to do something that was very challenging. And now, once, now that their life is somewhat... Whether it's going in the right direction or not, they've they've come to the conclusion that they're tired of being left out. And I feel very strongly that they're ready to make a solid commitment to you, something that you've been waiting for. And it's like now they're ready to really build a family. They're ready to, you know, work with you. They're ready to kind of open up and express something to you. One card here about, okay, Page of Swords, you know, I do think that at times, and this can be you're dealing with an air sign or a, another earth sign, I think that at times this person wouldn't communicate, you know, and it's like they did it to hurt you. I don't know why I think that, but it's almost like, you know, um, it was too hard to, it, it, maybe it was too hard on your end. It's like, I can't keep communicating with you when I love you, right? And it's also to a level of watching and waiting, um, I do feel strongly too, that this person and, and Scorpio is here as well, but this person is, you know, watching you, has been watching you, has been watching what you're doing. Um, that's definitely, what is that? Uh, Saturn and Leo. So that's also about, you know, um, trying to, you know, stay back, stay cool, not be involved because they don't want to look stupid, but then also, you know, um, having a level of discipline with themselves. It's like really trying to control their ego. I do think when it comes to you for some reason, Taurus, Jesus, all these cards are like, hold on, I got more to say. Um, so that's kind of interesting here. Ace of Cups. Yeah, it's like they're watching and waiting for that right time to actually settle down and make you that offer. And I do think it's been hard for them. I think that they've really had a lot of self-restraint when it has come to you for whatever reason. Um, how you view this person as an emperor. So obviously this is a person that you feel like is your equal, right? Taurus is the empress. Every time I ask about this person, they come up as emperor. You view this person in a very high light, probably higher than they view themselves. This person may be somebody who... Um, 
at first, I think that, let me, let me, let me rethink that. I have a lot of thoughts going through my head. Um, with the emperor here, I feel like this person is definitely in the limelight. I think that this person works with money. I think that this person, um, is either, you know, a politician or, you know, they have something to do with, you know, being in the limelight, being seen, being out there. Um, I also think too, that this person is used to making decisions and people listening. And I think it's different when it comes to you, Taurus, because, you know, um, they, they, they see you as somebody that's completely different. Like they, they view you as somebody who's not going to break. You know what I mean? They, they view you as somebody who, um, values yourself and, you know, isn't somebody that they can just say, Hey, go do this. Right. Cause Taurus is like, Oh, hell no, you go do that for your damn self. Like you going to do that for me. Last time I checked, it's a no, so you can go ahead and carry it out yourself, right? I also think, too, with the emperor being here is how you how you feel about this person. This person definitely enhances your self-esteem and your image. You and this person definitely look good together, right? I do think that there's a level of assertiveness. This person is very highly protective of, over you. Uh, they give you a lot of energy and also kind of feed into a level of impulse. More information on how Taurus feels about this person romantically. Okay, the strength card. Maybe you feel like they had to, and, and this is also Leo, that they had to really, really, you know, bring back their actions. It's also too having to fight for something. You know, maybe you wanted this person to fight for you. Let me ask, because why is the strength card here? Why are you showing me the strength card? With the Queen of Wands, Aries, and this is also Cancer. I feel like you wanted them to fight for matters of the heart. I feel like you wanted them to fight for your level of security. It's like, I want you to show me that I'm important to you, right? Think about it. The Queen of Wands, that is, you know... um, that is Aries and Cancer. This You wanted this person to be passionate and emotional about you. Have that emotional connection. And make you a solid offer. That's what you wanted from, from this person, whoever it is. And um, give me one, one more card. Why, why did Taurus want this from this person? Because of the Ten of Cups. Pisces, okay? I feel like also too, like you wanted that from them because you genuinely love them. You genu genuinely want to start a family with them. And this is Mars and Pisces. So you do see, you know, how this can play out if, you know, in a very like dreamlike state, you're like, yo, this can't work. And I think for you, Taurus, to even be open-minded enough to lead with your emotions and how you feel about this person, that's saying a lot because usually you're not like that, Right. But I just feel like when it comes to them, there's just like an influx of emotions that are just pouring out. You know what I mean? Because you really do feel like not only is this person, are they your lover, but then they also are your best friend too, right? Talking to them fucking, you know, if you don't talk to them, it sucks. And as I'm saying this, the lovers pop out. Possibly Gemini. You just feel like this is your person. And here's the dope thing about this deck right here. The lovers comes about when the emperor and the empress consummate their marriage. So once they're married and they have sex, that's when the lovers uh, come out. So that's very telling to me. That's 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 saying a lot when it comes to you and them. It's it, it's really shining a big light on the fact that you and them are meant to be, and it's only a matter of time, right? Okay, what is Taurus like about this person romantically? Eight of Wands, you know, uh, that's Sagittarius. I, I think for you, you know, what you really enjoy about this person is their interaction, is the conversation, is, you know, how much passion the two of you have towards one another, right? It's like you both are straining towards a goal and there's movement towards that, but there's also communication on how you're planning on getting there, right? Because that's Mercury in Sagittarius, and both of you have the ability to express what you want, but then move in that same direction on how you obtain that. Not a lot of people have that. And I think that you find this person as very intriguing because they're very adaptable. 
And it's also too, it's like they have a level of intuition and they have the ability to communicate that to you in a manner when they choose to. Um, what is coming in with the Eight of Wands? One more time. What's, what's coming? God damn it. The, okay. <laughs> the Ace of Wands. So the Eight of Wands is leading, I'm sorry, to the Ace of Swords. You see, that's a level of clarity. That's somebody who's stimulating you uh, physically as well as mentally. That's somebody who, you know, could be your best friend as well as your lover. And I think that that's scary. I mean, shit, that'd be scary for me. I'm going to be honest. Um, what what does uh, Taurus have clarity on here? The Ace of Wands. You see, there is some type of new beginning that you want with this person. You want to try this again. You feel like now you have, if, especially if this is a relationship from your past. And I'm going to say this. If you are single, this can be a past life relationship, which is why you feel so connected to this person. But there is some type of new beginning that's happening that's forcing this issue. So whatever was, you know, stuck prior or whatever sacrifices this person made, they made them for you to be with you, to come see you, which is beautiful. What does uh, Taurus not like about this person romantically? Woo! Eight of Pentacles. I mean, this may sound crazy, Taurus, but you may be upset at the fact that they're so focused on their work. You know, it's like they're so focused on, you know, what they're working on, trying to perfect their craft, that they're not realizing that you're sitting here waiting for them, right? And that you feel like they're perfect. That's something that's here. However, I do think this person does genuinely care about you and they're working as hard as they are to make you happy. Four of Wands, to provide you a level of stability, to provide you the foundation where, you know, you and them can go on trips together and it's nothing. You know, Taurus, if you're like, hey, you know, I want that new Louie. They're like, cool, I got you, boo. You know what I mean? Or, hey, you know, I want to go somewhere for my birthday. Or, hey, I want to go on vacation. They're like, cool, where do you want to meet? I'll book your flight. You know, like it's that type of vibe. They want to have the ability to offer you whatever you need. Look, chariot with the empress. They want to have the ability to see you whenever they want. I feel like that's been an issue with you and them is the fact that, you know, distance has been an issue or time, time or distance, however you want to look at that. In my personal opinion, I feel like they're both the same. Okay. All right. So we then have the nine of swords here. Vincenzo, please don't touch the dog. Sorry, my son is home uh, from school today because he was having seizures all weekend long. So now he's stuck in my room listening to your guys' reading, which is kind of dope. Um, okay, so you have the Nine of Swords here. Um, I feel like somebody is definitely trapped in their head. Somebody's obviously over-processing something. Somebody's trying to really, really figure out exactly how this goes. And I feel like there's a lot of wonder here. And there's a lot of what ifs. This is definitely like a weird mental state to be in. And this is Mars and Gemini. It's like, how are you going about something? You're not exactly sure because you're just in your head. It's like you're thinking about what actions need to be taken instead of to actually physically taking the actions. What's being processed right now? What, what are they thinking about? The two of wands. This is Aries. That's Aries. So I feel like this person is thinking about what direction to take it. What what direction will it, will it go? What, hold on, my cards are all wonky. What direction will uh, this relationship go? Or what direction is it, are they leaning towards? The King of Wands. That makes sense to me. The King of Wands, that's definitely Leo, Aries, or Sag. However, I take the King as Leo. I'm going to be honest. This is somebody who, uh, one, is a fixed sign, okay? So they offer you that level of stability, uh, practicality. They're very focused. They're very attached. They're very committed. They'll give you the shirt off their back. They're leaning on being more so loving and caring and nurturing towards you, giving you something. How does... Um, how will Taurus feel about this? You feel like it's it, it's what needs to be done. I'm telling you. 
If you want me, come get me. That's how I feel like you guys think right now. How does Taurus feel about this King of Wands? Justice, you see? Libra. They may have a Libra moon, Libra rising, Libra um, Venus or ascending. However, this person, it's like they're making things right. In the past, if they've hurt you, because there probably was a level of hurt, and maybe this person was dealing with more than one person, I feel like for you, for you, Taurus, it's like this person is finally making it right. This person is finally doing the right thing. How does their person feel about the situation? How does their person, romantic person, feel about the situation? The Page of Cups. You see, they're tired of being at a distance from you. They're jealous. They're jealous that other people have the ability to see you and touch you and kiss you. Look, Knight of Wands, you see that? Embrace you and they can't. That sucks. They don't like that. And that's a Gemini or that's Sagittarius. Um, also too, I feel like with the distance that's between the two of you, there's this what if, like, what if this happens? What if that happens? It's like they're so in their head about what happens when they see you and what they don't know about what you're doing. And I feel like that's why the Wheel of Fortune is here because they want to implement that change. And that's also Sagittarius, right? It's like this person, as much as they want to walk away, they know that they can't because Part of them does need this connection. Part of them is just as connected or more to you than you are to them. And they know like, despite whatever front they're putting up, they know that you're right for them. And they tried, I feel like this person has probably tried to approach you in a friendly manner. Like, well, let's just be cool. Let's just be friends. And you know, my thing is always this. I don't fuck my friends. Okay, I don't deal with that. Like, I don't, I, I don't date my friends. Like, I don't have romantic relationships with my friends. You are not my friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes that may come across harsh, but I feel like, Taurus, you're having that conversation. Like, no, don't get it twisted. I'm not the one. I have enough friends and you are not one of them. You're either my lover or nothing. I can't play this middle ground. This middle ground is murky. That's that shit that the, you know, um... That middle ground is kind of what the cardinal or mutable signs can do, but that's something that the fixed signs don't do. We, we can't be friends like that. Now, for an external influence, obviously, it's a seven of swords. That's Mercury in um, Aquarius. And I do want to say this. There's obviously something um, that's coming, right? And it's some type of hidden plan, some type of actions carried out in secret, some type of distraction, but I don't always think that sometimes some things need to be hidden, right? Like what's being hidden here with the Seven of Swords? The Magician, Aries, um, Gemini, or Virgo. This person is manifesting something. You or this person is manifesting something that, that the other person isn't, uh, isn't being told about, right? They're taking, a, they're taking an action on something that's not being spoken. Uh, what exactly is being manifested? The three of wands. That's a reunion. That's a level of success. That's coming back. That's seeing you. This is Mars in, um, maybe the two of wands is Mars in Aries. And then this one is Aries. Either way, it's an energy that is coming back. You know what I mean? It's an energy where the wait is just about to be over. Yeah, this is sun is sun and Aries. I'm sorry. You know, it's like the waiting on things coming forward. You know, this person is ready to take the initiative to come get that ass. They're like, oh no. Oh no, I'm done waiting. I want to see you. Okay. Look, and as I said that, the star card fell out. Aquarius. Okay. I've been thinking about you. I've been watching you, right? For me, the star card is another level of manifestation, right? Because if, if somebody is making a wish on a star, that means that they believe in that. If you believe in something, you're more likely to have a blessing come forward or you're more likely to manifest something because you believe in it. You're putting positive energy towards it. That's why this person wants to see you. They want to see you very, very bad. They want to be in front of you. Four of Wands in a bed with you. They, you know, want to have a level of security when it comes to you and they want to get out of this period of weight or this period of feeling stuck. 
How would Taurus feel about this? How would Taurus feel about this? The Six of Swords. That's kind of funny. You would feel like that's Mercury in Aquarius. You'd feel like, and the other one was Moon. I'm sorry. I don't know if I said that or not. But, you know, you'd feel like it was a very honest conversation and having a level of forward movement. Where is it moving towards? The Two of Cups. That's Cancer Venus. That's um, Gemini or Pisces. However, you know, with the Cancer Venus, that's a very loving, caring, and compassionate relationship. That's somebody who's always giving, that's being helpful, that, that you know, their life is surrounded by love and caring, and it makes them feel good. Look, the sun is here, okay? Leo, it's an embrace. It's like you feel whole again. How does this person feel about, okay, the emperor? How do they feel about it, the emperor? You know why? Because they're finally in a position to stand up and do the right thing. And the funny thing is, you don't even see them coming. The moon with the six of wands. You do not even see this person coming. Pisces or Cancer, they're doing it without you knowing it. And I think that that's beautiful. If this has brought enough clarity, thank you so much, Taurus. I love you, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.